In this lesson, I wanted to just cover some of the more advanced type of e-technologies just from an overview perspective so you know they're there. The first one I want to talk about is network virtualization. So we talk a lot about abstracting resources, abstracting CPU, memory, storage between the virtual machine and the hypervisor host. But we rarely abstract the network. The IP address of that virtual machine has to match the IP addressing of the IP scheme used on the network that it's connected to. Network virtualization allows us to break that bond. We can actually create virtual networks, a red network, a blue network, and they're completely abstracted from the physical network fabric. They can have their own IP schemes. The red and the blue network cannot see each other at all. They could actually be using the same IP schemes both in the red and the blue network and they won't clash because they're abstracted from the real physical network fabric. Now we can still use VLANs, but VLANs do have configuration challenges and they do have limitations in what they can do. With network virtualization, you are completely abstracted. I could have one subnet now spanning multiple physical locations. It could be on-prem and off-prem and I wouldn't have to re-IP my VM when I moved it. When I talk about moving resources, Windows Server 2012 has live migration, but it had that already in Windows Server 2008 R2, the ability to move a VM with no downtime. Windows Server 2012 has shared nothing live migration. So in my Hyper-V settings, you configure a network that you wish to use for that live migration traffic, and I can now move a VM between any two Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V hosts. They don't have to be clustered, I can move between two standalone hosts. I can move between a standalone and a cluster, a cluster to a standalone, a cluster to a cluster. Complete mobility with no boundaries. I can do simultaneous live migrations in Windows Server 2012, and it would dynamically adjust the number it runs concurrently based on the amount of network bandwidth available, and then just queue whichever ones it doesn't think it should currently run. As part of that shared nothing live migration, it copies the memory, the device state, and the storage. So also in Windows Server 2012 is Live Storage Move, the ability to move the storage of a VM between any supported medium with no downtime. This could be direct attached. This could be a SAN. This could be an SMB3 file share, which is now supported in Windows Server 2012 as a place to store your virtual machine hard drives and configuration. So complete mobility. Hyper-V Replica is another great feature. Consider, for example, I may have a disaster recovery environment and I want a disaster recovery copy of some of my key virtual machines. With Hyper-V Replica, every five minutes, it replicates the contents of the changes of the virtual machine storage over to that DR location. In a disaster, it can then do a planned failover, i.e. I can shut down the primary, copy over any changes, and then start up that replica, or an unplanned where I may lose a few minutes because I never got a chance to copy over those last few minutes of data. Additionally, Hyper-V Replica allows you to create alternate IP configuration so that when this VM actually fails over, it will automatically re-IP that VM based on the IP scheme used at that disaster recovery location. So hugely powerful features. And there's many, many more. This course has covered some of the high-level creating VMs, creating networks. But in Windows Server 2012, Hyper-V really is a top-tier hypervisor. Enterprise ready and really can do anything you require. So take some time to look around, look at the configurations, look at the functionalities. And indeed, Hyper-V will really help you with all of your Windows Server 2012 needs as you can virtualize all of those loads on Hyper-V. And indeed, in your own learning, your test environments, stand up Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V. Use it to create your test environments, create virtual domain controllers, create virtual file servers, DNS and DHCP. Test all these things out and you'll actually learn Hyper-V while learning all the other functionalities. This concludes the quick overview of some of the other major Hyper-V features.